Okay, let me make my position clear. There is a coronavirus pandemic. It originated in China and there are different strains of it. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. It was almost certainly produced in the laboratory at Wuhan. The people responsible for it should be held to account and the people who allowed it to spread should be held to account. I don't simply mean the Chinese government. In fact, I don't think the Chinese government can be blamed for producing virus any more than the British government can be blamed for producing uh, for what happened in the 1950s at Porton Down or the American government for the obscene Tuskegee syphilis experiment, the people lower down the food chain. These people should be held to account. Whether or not they will be, I, I very much doubt it. Especially as there appears to be a lot of collusion with uh, Western scientists uh, across the board. <clears throat> what I will, will say is that this whole lockdown business is to complete garbage, as are masks. I've got masks here, I've got, um, this is the the ultra cheap one, the one you, you, you they give you those if you go to hospital. This is a slightly, uh, slightly more expensive one. I've got um, a, a real, very good quality one somewhere, which I bought at the start of the pandemic. But they're no good because <clears throat> I mean a mask like this will protect you maybe against um, particulate matter, air pollution. Many years, for many years I've seen Chinese tourists in London wearing masks and a lot of uh, Chinese people who live in big cities wear them anyway because of the pollution. Will a mask like that protect you against a bacterium? <laughs> I doubt it. And a virus is much, 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 much smaller than a bacterium. So no. And then there are all the associated, I mean, they getting kids to wear them and, and they touch their faces and they touch things and so the whole thing is complete garbage. I can understand the people wearing them in hospitals, um, of, of course, you know, but th there are other infections there. Vaccinations. I've had two, I had the, the, the vaccination and the booster. I think it was the AstraZeneca one. I had those at Lewisham Hospital. And then more recently I had no, I had the, the first and second parts, that's right. More recently, I, that, was, that, was, that was, I think November of last year and earlier this year. More recently, last month, I had the booster for injection number three for, for COVID. And this time, I, I mean, the first two times, the arm was a little bit sore, that's all, but the, the third one, I, the, the, I had really bad side effects Fortunately, it lasted only a day or so. But I had it, I had the injection Saturday afternoon. Well, Saturday, Saturday evening. It was relatively Saturday afternoon. But it was relatively Saturday evening. Down uh, <coughs> at, a, at a school in, in Sydenham, in low, towards Lower Sydenham. And I had, I mean, I had to go, when I went to bed that night, I, I, I spent most of Sunday in bed. I was really neck pains and sweating and, and shivering and I lost my appetite which was always a bad sign for me and other people have reported bad symptoms as well so if there is a fourth one uh, I don't think I'll get one with regard to lockdowns and mandates these, this really is an absolutely outrageous attack on civil liberties and freedom what are they going to do next you know um, I'm old enough to remember the AIDS pandemic and they closed down bathhouses in San Francisco which caused uh, a furore from the usual suspects but they didn't insist that homosexuals or anyone else be 
injected. Well, there wasn't uh, recently an antidote for AIDS, except to stop playing in sewers where you'll catch exotic diseases. But they, they didn't isolate people. They, they tested people regularly. And this is just absolutely outrageous. As Rob Emanuel said, and I've no doubt some Greek philosopher or Greek housewife said a long time before him, never let a good opportunity go to waste. Never let, never let a good crisis go to waste. And this is what's happening. The ultra left is using this. That they did it. They used it to to drive Trump out of office and to to destroy the American economy. It hasn't been so bad here. Australia has been absolutely terrible. The, the absolute the police there have been absolute barbarians. So we have to stop this lockdown menace. This nonsense. Something else. Um, I, I did. I did a little bit of research a while back. I published an article on it. It seems to me that nobody. I mean, there, there were maybe a few excess deaths because of COVID, but there's this viral interference thing. Influenza has almost disappeared. I had an influenza jab as well uh, a week before the the third injection. Uh, I've no, no problems with that, but I'm, I'm 65 years old, so, so, so it, I mean, and I've never been in great health, but I can understand younger people, especially women. I mean, need I mention thalidomide? We don't know what effects this will have on, especially teenage girls or younger girls. And COVID isn't that much of a risk for the young. I'm reminded here in 1990 when I was 34 I, I, I went down to small, uh, smallpox, chickenpox which is a fairly mild childhood disease but when you're 34 years old it was, it was, I thought I was going to die man but these diseases the, the, uh, these viral infections and bacteria are in the air all the time and nobody I knew at the time contracted chickenpox certainly not from me but if they'll get you or they won't get you and I say I, I, did, I did some research on this from if the figures I found are correct life expectancy has increased very slightly for the past four years in in England and Wales in the United States in France in India which is the largest population on earth and Australia is it a, it lags quite a way behind in India, but life expectancy has increased very slightly. So if people are living longer, which which would you rather have? Um, dying from influenza at the age of 85 or from COVID at the age of 86? Um, so I think the whole thing is, there's so much vested interest here. The, a lot of people making a lot of money out of it. A lot of people making a lot of political capital out of it, capital out of it. But we've had influenza epidemics before. We've had um, certainly in my lifetime have been um, very bad um, epidemics as opposed to pandemics. But we've had all sorts of um, infections over the past few years, past few decades, we have to learn to live with them. So I would say that the whole thing, stop this lockdown garbage, all of it. Keep developing the vaccines by all means, uh, but they should not be compulsory for anyone. They're mostly for older people. And um, we have to pressurise our governments to stop this madness. Thankfully, there is a lot of a lot of uh, fight back against it because I, I've known that what they want eventually is for everybody to have the vaccine passports and maybe eventually a, a, a microchip in the back of your neck. When when David Icke made his claims in back in the nineteen nineties, they laughed at him. Well, they're not. Well, they're still laughing, but they're not laughing quite so loud now. So we have to stop this. We have to stop this madness, and I would urge everybody to resist further assaults on freedom 
in the name of of um, saving us from some real but grossly overrated threat. <laughs>